going to wear my hat under my headphone, which is probably not a good idea because my head is already so stuffed I can't hear anything. I have to take a picture. You look just uh, positively Halloween-y because your hat's orange and black. You know what I mean? The stripes? Mm -hmm. So just excuse me for a second while okay. I do this. I'm going to go, yeah, that's beautiful. You had the microphones like right on your mouth, so I couldn't see your mouth, which is fine. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I didn't need to see your mouth particularly. Okay. All right, thank you. I'm probably going to germ this microphone up, so whoever has a show right after us, maybe don't use mic number two. Yeah, there should. That's three. This is three. Yeah, there should be a dip, oh, yeah. like a sterile dip. That the why isn't there a microphone dip? No, oh, there probably is. Or an oven. You could microwave it. Maybe that would work. Oh, right. You can do that with sponges. You uh, yeah. sterilize them. So I would assume if you got this little microphone yeah. foam wet, you could sterilize it in the microwave. There are solutions to most of life's problems. Yes. You, <laughs> there are. <laughs> Sorry. You, you look partially convinced, but not of, thoroughly. I'm partially convinced that... How did I get here today? I don't even know how I <laughs> dropped out the street. You know what? You know what? When I have a cold, I'm convinced that my extra sensory perception must be up because I'm I'm like deadened in other areas. Like I can't really hear. I feel like my vision is kind of foggy. But I'm driving down the road and far off on Route 110, I saw a big truck full of firewood coming at me. And it was a dump truck and the firewood was piled really high and it was way far off. And all of a sudden a feeling came over me and I said, oh, I don't want to pass that thing. So I slowed down to a crawl and got way over and it was flying along. And just as it came to me, a whole bunch of firewood went flying off the top, no. came down over their windshield. And then they ran over it, big hunks of split firewood and swerving all over the place. And it got kicked all over the road. And it was the weirdest thing because wow. it was just driving along fine when I first saw it. But I had a gut feeling that I didn't want to go by that and so i said wow when i have a head cold i'm psychic wow now i'm a little nervous because you might be able to read my mind it's november though and all the bad stuff happens in november no i totally disagree i know every year it no. does christina no. this is what the most people die and the most animals die no you are so it's so hunting season wrong you well, don't okay. like it's you don't not, like hunting season. It's not great for deer. I will concede that much. Or other animals too. But as far as people, it is fantastic. Look at me. Look at me. I, I know you look I, really healthy. I got sickeningly all, healthy. Well, I got all the way to Atlanta, Georgia, and back. Ooh, it was probably warmish there. It was a little chilly when I first what? got there, and then it gradually warmed up. So, wow. 
But it's quite a ways. You know, it's not a little short jaunt. It's not like going over to the town of, say, I don't know, Stratford. It's different. Yeah, yeah, it is. There's a lot of uh, big highways. I love road trips, though. It's more fun with two people. Yeah, I know. Doing I would not want to go by myself. It's kind of, eh, kind of, meh. I, I would have gone with you, but I couldn't. I had too much going on, but. Yeah. Well, Next time you go to Georgia, I'll go with you. Yeah, it was it was character building. Who's that guy? See that guy? What See guy? That blue, that blue guy? Yeah, who is that? What the heck is he doing in the studio? Is, is it Ronald Reagan? It's Ronald it Reagan. It looks like Ronald Reagan. He's blindfolded. Who is blindfolded? That's so strange. What the heck? It says Kozik. Is and he a pencil sharpener? What is he? robot. Uh, is it pencil sharpener? I, I don't know. I guess he's just a bust. Here, you the see. Bright Try blue, to figure it out. Bright maybe, blue bust. Of maybe it's a Ronald piggy bank. Reagan. Is there a slot for coins? No, he's not blindfolded. That's a um. That's one of those three D, three D glasses. Yeah, and he has an X on his forehead, and he has a Star Trek button on. Something I'm missing. Something. It, maybe it's not Ronald Reagan. Maybe I've made that up. No, it it looks like Ronald Reagan. Does it? I don't know. There's always mysterious wow. artifacts appearing in our studio here. Yeah, it makes life kind of interesting. That's true. But we always have all these plans for leaving artifacts here, and we don't do it. When are we going to prank the radio station? I thought we were going to dress it all up in here. Yeah, we should. Let's meet for hot chocolate and okay. uh, discuss that more thoroughly. Oh, I had tea and I left it in the car. Look, I brought tea. I well, think I'm not going to drink your tea because I'm sick and well, then you'll be sick. And okay. Then, then what? It'll be 50% The future today. of 11th hour radio will be at stake at that point. Yeah, but even if one of us is drinking tea, that will sort of inculcate right. this whole uh, <laughs> kind of feeling across this region that everybody should just slow down and they should sit down and they should have a cup of tea with them and they should... Uh, just just make things feel good for just a minute, even if they're crappy, just like as a kind of practice or an exercise, just see if you can get yourself into a place of feeling what it feels like to feel good. You know, like, I think it's a very high spiritual art to at will be able to create that feeling inside yourself. Well, I think if you know the things that you like, it's easier. You can create happy space. Without drugs? Happy space? Yeah. That sounds a little suspicious to me. Totally. Yep. Okay. <laughs> what are you picking cat hair off your tongue? Yeah. Why so do you lick your cat so much? <laughs> <laughs> That's not very funny. I, I don't lick my cats. I don't. <laughs> no, but I did. Look, I put my gum down. That was uh, respectful to the audience, wasn't it? Oh, I, That's how I, I didn't even it. see. I didn't even notice your gum there. Yes, and if anybody's listening and they can think of a respectful act to perform that shows somebody else that they value them, then do it now. Well, I grew up learning that you it was impolite to chew gum in public, so I often do it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but are, are you public? Like, if I chewed in front no, of you. No, we're not. I'm not public. We're, no. No. Would your family but be does public? it kind of count that you're on the radio? Is that public? Well, yeah. I mean, they can't see you. And you're a very discreet gum chewer. Yeah. Like, I don't know where you put it. Like, you must have an extra set of little teeth in the back that you chew. And you don't move your mouth. You could be a ventriloquist. Yeah, that's unlikely. Sorry, I, don't, I didn't plan on not making any sense this whole entire time. But... Yeah, you're just doing a lot of That's probably what's ear hustling. Happen. Do you know what ear hustle means? No, no. It's prison slang for eavesdropping. Ear hustle. Ear hustling. Huh. Just in case you might need that at know some point. Slang? I don't know. I just do. I know lots of slang. There's another slang spelling word that I'd like to give you. But before I do that, how would you like to introduce our show oh. this morning? God. <laughs> Have we ever unprompted just professionally introduced our show like regular DJs? I think ever? you did once. And yeah, I thought I made a big deal of it. Like, hey, look, I remembered. Yeah, you were so surprised yeah. at your own good behavior. Well, so you guys are listening to 11th Hour Radio. It's been two <laughs> weeks. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. That's Christina Stikos. I'm Emily Howe. 
We broadcast live every Friday at 11 a.m. from Royalton Community Radio, which is WFVRLP 96.5. And you can also find us live streaming on the web at Royalton Community Radio's website. And we have podcasts available at 11thHour.com. You can subscribe on iTunes or YouTube or Apple Podcasts. Oh, yeah, you did that one. I'm supposed to be doing something. I don't mean, I mean, radio-wise. I think you assigned me something, and I forgot what it was already. To get more subscribers? Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> I have yeah. to go look. I have to, watch, I have to watch tutorials, I think, right? Yeah, I don't know. If anybody has suggestions on how to get Emily to, to do, do a little stuff. homework. Yeah, I got to I, I can't seem, I don't crack the whip hard enough. No. Well, but... I write it down, and then the only time I open this little book where I write things down is on Fridays. So I need to, like... Well, I think what what happens is Write that it on my forehead or if, something. If you happen to get any free time at all, then you just want to lie in bed and eat grilled cheese. I never lie in bed and eat grilled cheese. That sounds yes, really you, good, though. Oh, come on, you do. Well, I you could should totally go for that. Maybe today. I think you should, especially since you have a cold. You want to really hammer on no, the cheese. No, because I lied around. <laughs> no, I lay, lied, laid. Whichever is fine. Fine. Well. Yesterday, I spent the whole day doing nothing, and that's quite unusual for me. I really couldn't, though, and I didn't even eat cheese, Christina, because you know what? I couldn't taste it, and I'm not going to eat cheese if I can't taste it. That's just empty calories for nothing. That's a waste. It yeah. is a waste. It's just like chewing cardboard. Yeah. I just don't want to be doing that. But I'm sure that your system works opposite of most people, so that if you add some kind of mucus-creating food into your <laughs> diet, like tenfold, it will you'll, heal me. you'll get cleaned out. Maybe. You'll sneeze yourself into a healthful oh, state. I you... sneezed yesterday. I've been really good. My oldest son had this cold right before I had it. And I panicked first because he wasn't feeling really good. And then I wasn't feeling really good. And I thought I had that anaplasmosis tick disease that you like die in eight days or whatever. Because right. everybody's getting they... it now. No, everybody <clears throat> is not getting well, it now. Whatever. Some guy Let's in Maine not exaggerate. Has it. And, and my sister's always freaking out about things and telling me how we're all going to die. So anyway, I thought I had it. And it was awful because it was like, oh, fever and body aches and chills. And I was like, oh, we have all this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then we got super stuffy. And I was so happy. Yeah. What happened to just getting a cold? I feel like stuffy is my ticket out of anaplasmosis. Yeah. And I'm we're not getting flu shots this year. I know that that's... I don't ever and, get flu shots. Well, I got one for my kids for a little while because I, I read some really scary, stupid internet articles about this. And it was awful. It was this mom like saying goodbye to her child for the last time as it died of the flu in the hospital. And I was like, oh my God, that's terrifying. And it went on to say how this flu is now this like super bug that can wipe you out. It's not like it used to be. So Ugh. I did. I got them and I got them for a couple of years for my kids. And then... And then I said, you know what? This is insane. We're all turning into tiny little wussy. Well, <sighs> yeah, not only that, but the 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 the, the huge vaccine only covers like a couple different strains of this flu, and they have to guess which strains those are. And guess what? They never are. We're all screwed. We're all screwed anyway. You turn it. So like, I'm not going to just oh, put more this chemicals is so into depressing. them. Sorry, sorry. It's God, I'm cold. this is I'm awful. Stopping. Anyway, the point. What my earlier story was. Because you said sneezing. I've been sneezing nonstop with this cold and I never sneeze. And and I try to cover up myself every time I sneeze. And my kids were on the couch with me last night. And I started to sneeze and I grabbed a tissue and I tried to plaster it over my face. But the sneeze went out of both sides of the tissue. And so I blasted both of my children with my snot sneeze. I think families kind of share all the same well, germs. I wouldn't worry Eli about that too I already had it, but now Ira's going to get it. I feel terrible. Because I did. Like, I, I actually, like, showered him with sneeze. Okay. I felt like a toddler. Okay. I can't control my own sneeze. Okay. But it was a super violent sneeze. Okay. Yeah. Sneezes are really involuntary and strange. Like, you can't control them. You know, how can we segue from sneezing to studded snow tires? Can you think it of a way? It starts with S. They both start with S. Okay. So I wanted to tell Speaking you. Speaking of things that start with S. <laughs> I drove all the way to Atlanta. On oh, my, clackety, clack, on clack, my, clack, clack. You my, got bad gas mileage, too. My new studded snow tires. That was not probably the and best you think, idea. You know, not only is it a waste to eat cheese when you can't taste it, but it also is a waste of to good drive in new Georgia snow tires. With snow tires. Yeah, but the problem was is that my summer tires just were not up to the trip. I didn't trust them. 
They were not going to make it. And plus, I was going to have to drive back possibly in winter because we never know when right, winter is going to come. So I just said, okay, I just am going to be safe and uh, this is what I have to do. So that's what I did. But, oh my God, I wouldn't believe what happened to me. What? You want to know some astrology too that will back up my story? Okay. Okay, astrology. This month we've had some pretty like hairy moments with Pluto. That's because it's November. Yeah, exactly. Pluto, Mars, that stuff. All of them. Yes, because Pluto Plu- to Plu- make mischief during November. Exactly. And Pluto is the planet <clears throat> that uh that rules explosions and volatility, just so you know. Yeah. So okay, you so not to tell that's... me that. I already would have known. Okay, so there you go. I just Plus feel in, it. throw Mars in. Throw Mars in. Okay, so we got this whole Mars is just a dick. This is like a prick. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it, you're probably right. You, you know? know it. Somebody had to say I it. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm. I think you're brave to actually say that. So yeah. So that's the backdrop, and I'm driving back from Atlanta, and I was smart enough on the way back to leave at five in the morning to get out of the city because that city, man, you don't want to drive into that city at rush hour. At, no, I don't like any cities at most any yeah, time driving. But. I know. I made that mistake on the way in. I drove in during rush hour. But anyway, I left Atlanta at 5 a.m. and everything seemed to be going smoothly. And I drove all the way in one day up to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So that's, can you tell me which states I drove through? Uh, it's a, well, you just said Pennsylvania. Yeah, but there's a whole bunch oh, in between. That? Let's there's see, a bunch. between Georgia and Pennsylvania? What yeah. is there? What is there? What, Tennessee? I no, didn't know. No. What is there? North Carolina, South Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia. You drove through all of these in one day? Yeah. And Maryland. Well, Maryland doesn't count. It's well, it kind of counted. Count. I was kind it's of... Re- like, whoop, hi, it was, bye. It was nice. You. It was a nice little drive through Maryland. Okay. Then Pennsylvania. So if I, I get to... Does Her- anyone even live in Maryland? I couldn't tell. It went by so fast. I really couldn't tell what was going on in Maryland. I mean, I know they have a hunt cup. People ride there. Oh. Yeah. Because I... I went to it once. Anyway, so that's off the... We're digressing a little bit because what actually happened to me when I got to... This has to have something to do with your snow tires, I assume. Not Well, not directly. Okay. But I'm just not a great city driver and... Join the club. Harrisburg started to get congested as I was driving through it and it got dark and there was construction, of course, just when you think you're home free... You Never. start to see those barrels in your eye. You start seeing double, and you said somebody, you know, wants to drive faster than you on one. There's one lane, and it's just really like you lose your cool. You get rattled, and so I start to get really rattled. So I, I just was, where's the next exit? And I got off at Hershey. Oh, hoping for candy bars. Chocolate. You know, most of Hershey chocolate is half wax, so you don't want to eat Hershey chocolate. Well, I didn't need any chocolate in All Hershey. Right. But actually, it still smells I, nice. Well. I, yeah, at that point, I was so uh, just rattled that I that I went to the nearest gas station because I didn't know where I was going to stay for the night. Yeah. It was just a big crapshoot at that point. So I, I was just happy to be off the highway, out of the traffic, and I pull up to the gas pump and I, you know, I stick the thing into the what do you call that thing? The nozzle, nozzle the nozzle into, the into my car, and I thing. and I engage it, and the meter that ticks off how much gas is going in is moving like a turtle it's just going super super slow and i thought well i could just hang it up (laughs) and i could go to a different pump and i thought no i'll just go sit in the car and i'll just i'll sit it out i'll just look at my phone and try to figure out where i'm going to stay for the night Wait, did you like click it so it would i don't know how to do that i've never just what you don't no i don't i've never just walked away from the gas pump i don't know how to do that i only know how to hold it well this will teach you never to do it (laughs) That's what happened was, was I, it like spilling all over the ground. Yeah, I wasn't no. paying attention, and all of a sudden I looked over. It's supposed to shut off. I know it's supposed to shut off, and it didn't, and that's why they tell you always stand by your car. And it was gushing out. It was gushing out all over the <laughs> ground, and I'm I'm just I'm in a bad place already because I'm yeah. all rattled from driving. I don't know where You're I'm in the town. Where they put wax in their Hershey, chocolate, Pennsylvania. I don't know what the heck's going on. Oh my god! So it wasn't fun. No. And their butt. And then I think, well, oh my God, I'm going to get back in my car. I'm going to turn it on and, just gonna, and I'm going to blow up. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Did so you are, put kitty litter on it? Aren't you? You didn't blow up. I'm it, so happy you're alive. I know. 
I just wanted you to know that I lived through that. You wouldn't have needed that much gas if you didn't have your snow tires on. You're probably right. Mine are unaligned now, so they're not only they loud, but they're wearing on the outside. So I'm going to go through them in like two months if I don't go get them aligned. There's just some things that you have to put up with in Vermont. You know, like bad crap with your snow <laughs> tires. Just, just like, <laughs> you're never going to be happy. You just forget it. Don't yeah. even try. Don't even expect to be happy no. about your equipment. We went on a road trip last week, too, to Plattsburgh, New York, for a film festival. And because my snow tires are on and they're unaligned and they're wearing, we decided to take John's really junky car. Because he insists that it's not junky, even though it's like the paint is all off of it. So it's kind of like mottled and it's a it's a Honda that looks exactly what all the teenage drug drivers, I mean, drug dealers drive. Really? Like it's teal. You, you see them and you're like, oh, you're a teenage drug dealer. Ah. You see them everywhere. And that's to say, they always wave at us, like other teenage boys wave at us <laughs> because they think we're that guy. But yeah. we're not. It's just a crappy old car. It's like from 1990 or something. John, John looks pretty young. Yeah, He'll always the hair. look young. Yeah. But I mean, anyway, he always insists his car is fine. And I'm like, nothing could look like that. It'd be fine. He could he could be a teenage albino, possibly. Maybe. But we drive it and it, it immediately the um, exhaust system falls off. So he goes and gets <laughs> like some V8 cans and wires it back together underneath it. So he's really dirty because he's like laying out of the car. And then we get in Burlington in heavy traffic. And there's a steep hill where you have to wait at a light and the car just totally dies and won't start again. No. And he's trying and trying and it won't. All these people are honking and honking behind us and he can't even get the window down because the car's off because he's trying to gesture to people to go by us. But he, yeah. he's like panicked at this point because uh, everyone's like crowded around us honking. This is, this yep. is Pluto. Pluto. And because the electric windows can't go down unless the car's not starting. So finally he like... Then he tries to open the door, but it's locked. And then he finally gets his door unlocked and opens it and starts gesturing people to go around. And I'm just freaking out, too. And, and so yeah. eventually we have to get the car rolled all the way back down this steep hill full of people honking at us into, like, a parking lot where we sit for hours. Well, not hours, but a while. And, and then it just randomly started again, and we drove on. But we had several incidences like that the whole way. And it was terrible weather. We had to go on the ferry. And the ferry was almost tipping over. I don't even know why they were running the ferry. Yeah, why the, do you run a ferry if it's going to tip over? I agree. That's just, that that ferry, is that just like a platform, like a barge with yes, cars on it? Yes, it is. That, and it's been, teeny. It's yeah. teeny tiny. And the waves were coming one. up over it and over your car. Yeah. That's, I was like, you can't have waves go over your car. Yeah, I don't. I don't. We're not a boat. I don't prefer that if I'm no, going to take a ferry. It was tipping way up and over. And I was like, Th someday this is going to flip over. And we're just going to be like one of those news stories. And our crappy little Honda is going to sink to the bottom of Lake Champlain. And John's just laughing while I'm crying. Yeah, so could I summarize? Yeah. I'd like to summarize that this month has had some <clears throat> issues with vehicles. It's because it's November. And, and safety. And let's just so everybody just, you know... I'm ratchet. Just, everybody has to ratchet watch down. it. Just be it, careful. Yeah, it's going to be fine. I mean, we're going to get through this. But some people don't get through it. Well, we are going to get through it, and everybody okay. listening is going to get through it because we're casting a spell, and we're just saying Pluto, just don't even think about it. Yeah. So we have protection. Okay. And now it's time for song. Oh, okay. Because we have music here occasionally. We like to what play. What did you bring? I, let's see, I have Davy Davis hard telling not knowing. Oh, I say that all the time. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, get it to play. Bolder thoughts assemble along the thinking wall. Metaphors and matadors just fencing for it all. Colder dreams tremble in an acid snowfall Destiny waits to make its call Ah ooh, I wonder, where's this world going? Hard telling, not knowing <laughs> Underneath the celluloid, the software and the slag where is the essence beneath the waving flag? Morning comes the glory of the plastic parade 
Night brings a wannabes, it's a wannabe charade. Ah, ooh, I wonder, where's this world going? Hard telling, not knowing. Standing in the middle of a saturated dream. Polymers and recon tours crawling through the scenes. Spawning in the middle of neurotic overtones. Knee deep in passion, or is it just testosterone? Seven figured sports stars doing tricks with various balls. Women along Fifth Avenue. Got no respect at all. Tabloids and necktied boys dancing cyberland. Waiting on the green wave to make everything grand. Oh, I wonder, where's this world going? Hard telling, not knowing. on the Beltway, thrive in Congress Mall. Campaigns and scandals eat money, schools slip and fall. Living off the fashion plate along the bordered aisle. Cable star and TV czars rule with shameless guy. Oh, I wonder, where's this world going? Hard telling, not knowing. CD-ROM and Uncle Tom took a run in cyberspace. Where they went is anybody's guess. I guess they had a race. Sitcoms and shooting proms, bullets in the streets. Is it analog or digital? What life and death mean? Mother Nature's choking. Don't be alarmed. This greenhouse gas only lives down on the farm. Chicken blues and terrorist coups owe to clone a green monkey. How in the world did this world get so darn? Does this road lead to hope, or is it just a faded dream? How pretty can it get when it's not all that it seems? Love is a jack, life is a queen. Don't mystery beat all you've ever seen. Oh, I wonder, where's this world going? Hard telling, not knowing. Oh, I wonder, where's this world going? I heard a, a banjo. I didn't because I just put my <laughs> headphones on right now. Well, I'm always impressed when I hear a banjo. I don't know, just that somebody would take the time to learn how to play it. Yeah, that's some tricky stuff there. Yeah, so kudos to whoever that was. Might have been the Davis brothers. I don't know. Kudos they, is an interesting word. Ow. Sorry, yeah, I just maybe it's, myself. <laughs> all right, the microphone. Just relax it back. Sorry, I'm you're going gonna, to. That's what I, that's you're what I was gonna, planning. That's why I was getting the microphone out of its thing. I know. I just feel just like you're, you're going to walk out of here just like a new woman. <sighs> Let's hope so. That's our goal. <clears throat> so I was going to give you that spelling challenge, okay? Oh. Ready? Okay. This is kind of different, this word. All right, ready? Yes. Cottywomple. What? That's, I don't know that. Even, I don't even know that word. Sure you do. Of course you do. Can I just spell Womple? Well, why not spell Cotty? Because I don't even know what it, I don't even know what it means. Like I don't know if it's a C or a K or like I don't know. Maybe it's even a Q. I don't know. Just use your imagination, Cotty Womple. Cotty Womple. Say it a few times, and you'll get the swing of it. It will tri- trip lightly off your tongue. And I'm land. just doing. C A D Y W A M P L E C A D like caddy yeah. like caddy shack. I don't know how, to... how we'd spell caddy. No caddy, caddy is two D's. This is not. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know what this word is. Who stared? Who Did stared? Did I at least get Wample right? I don't know. Did you? Did you get Wample correct? Said, how'd you spell the Wample part? Are you doing it? Are, is it Wample with an A or Wample with an O? Because I spelled it W-A-M-P-L-E. No, you're kind of far off the mark. Well, then, I told you. With Cotty Wample. Do you, I'll tell you what it means, and then that might help you a little bit. All right. It means, and this is English slang, evidently, it means to travel purposefully toward an as-yet-unknown destination. Yeah, no, that did not help me. No? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm d- I don't want you to suffer, because right. I just told you that you were going to feel great tell when me, you left here. Tell me how to really so, spell it. No suffering. C-O-D-D-I-W-O-M-P-L-E. Cotty Wample. So if you're feeling crappy today, just say that, that three times, and I think it's going to pick you that right is up. Not a word that is right. You know what though? I was just grilling my fifth grader on his spelling words, and I the words themselves weren't particularly hard, but most of them had meanings that I mean the children had never heard them. I don't think you should have a word that they don't know the meaning of. <clears throat> is that because kids don't read enough? No, like there were words that like they like just what? probably wouldn't have encountered yet, like vetch. The plant? Vetch? Yeah. Yes, you would have. No, you think a 10-year-old is yes, like, Yes, oh, my vetch. kids would know what vetch well, is. Well, your kids belong to a gardener, and I- I'm not one. My kid has no idea, so he's just blindly spelling a word that he doesn't know what it means. It's like a nonsense word. Okay, to but him. I think part of spelling is also to learn new vocabulary. Yeah, but they aren't learning the vocabulary. It's just a list of you words. You don't have to go through it. What do you care? Because I, I do have to go through it. I have to like give them these words. And it, it's like, it's just weird to me that they would give them words that they don't know the meaning of. Your kids play so much. Can't they work a little too? Yeah, but I like <laughs> vetch. I just that and when I say your kids play so much it's because they like, have a great life and they get to play and that's good uh, they don't and they think also so. have they a think ma- that I'm a horrible no, miserable bad mom they because have they're these... about to be teenagers and my teenage kid hates me so much <clears throat> I I want to tell you something if you want to talk about kids because obviously it sounds like you do I I came to a, a, <laughs> a realization about kids okay because my kids my kids don't like holidays anymore, which I think I've That's told you. That's not but I, right. I figured out. They're going to come through this. No, but I figured out what it is. What? Okay, what it is, and it's especially acute in families where, like blended families where there's step parents. Oh, and yeah, ste- you so know, much hassle. Like the whole extended thing. Okay, so when your kids are little and before you get divorced, because there is a time before you get divorced. Well, like I, we're past that now, sh- so I don't think I can. Don't. <laughs> Okay, what? Don't what? interrupt me Fine. all the time. <laughs> I like it to a point, and then I don't. Okay, so they're little, and Christmas is for them. It right. is for them, and they know it. It's like Christmas mom and dad are doing Christmas for me. Right. Okay, but at a certain point, at a certain age, holidays become a time of social obligation and familial obligation. Yes. Where not only do you have to start giving presents to other people, but you have to go to different events to please people so that to prove to them that you love them as much as you love the other person. Right. Yeah, like that you is love very this stressful. that you love the stepdad as much as the you know, the stepmom or the, it's just, right, there's this right. big thing that gets created. And then there's all the extended family from all of those families. And it becomes this huge chaos. And my kids, I have to say, they, they went through this whole experience with a lot of poise and it didn't show to me at the time that they were suffering too much with it, except I could see little signs. But now I know, cause I'm seeing the, the ultimate result is like the holidays don't want to do it. And so I want them to come back home at some point and we're going to discuss it. We're going to say, okay, what is it about the holidays from your point of view that is stressing, stressful? And let's go back to the root of what a holiday wants to be and what we want it to be. And let's reshape that in some way that works for us, you know, but it's, it's, that's a good idea. Yeah. When your kids are in their twenties and thirties, they, I think it's time for them to come back and have a discussion, but we are the adults. We are still the adults in the room. You know, we have to yeah. start those things with our kids. So that's, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I feel like my kids co- kind of at the moment. Yes, you're right. Because it is for them. They are, they love the fact that it's so many families because that means more toys, more toys. That means more cake. That means more everything. Um, yeah. More love. And I think, I think that you're right though. I think that, my oldest already has some anxiety about making everything really fair 
Like he's super careful to, if he says something good about one side, he kind of juggles around in his head to say something matching about the other side. Like yeah. he can't, even if it's hard in certain, certain, certain circumstances, he is very acutely aware of, and I've always actually been a little annoyed at, there are these books that I read my kids all the time years ago when I first got divorced. There's like Dinosaurs Divorce is the most is the most famous one that all the therapists are like, read this to your kids. But it stresses over and over and over and over to the kids about like how everything is equal, how everyone still loves them the same amount and blah, 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 blah. And I think in a way it makes the kids really obsessed with trying to make sure every everything is fair. Like, and I, I really don't think that's the kid's job yeah. in a way to try to be like, oh, well, I did this thing for mom. I need to do this thing for dad or I did this thing for dad, you know. Yeah, I, I just kind of want them just to be able to like live and experience their childhood exactly. without having to They're... stress out about who they're pleasing all the time. I know. And the book really did kind of, I, I thought it really kind of um, made that be a front and center how if you do this with mom, you do this with dad. If you did... yeah. And I was like, that's not actually the way all split families work book. That's like a perfect world where everybody can get along and yeah. everything's fine. So I felt like the book didn't actually address like 90% of most people's broken homes. Exactly. There's a whole lot of messiness to it yeah. and things that you can't control. And, you know, it's just like your kids do end up trying to do a lot of either people pleasing yeah. or acting out. I mean, there's both that yes. will inevitably occur under the circumstances. So I, know. I don't know. Best thing is love, love, whatever yeah. you can do to just be loving and just love and love yourself. Uh, what was that swear word you said? Oh, dick. That's not a swear word. Is it? It's not? a name. It it's is a not? body part. It's not a swear word. A swear word is like an exclamation you, of... You were saying it to insult somebody. I forget who. Right, but I still don't think... No. It was calling Mars. Calling somebody a body... <laughs> oh, you were, calling, you were calling a planet yeah. a body part. See, it's just That's so... kind of weird how we create insults, don't, isn't it? Like what they're made of. What's an insult made of? Uh, snakes and snails and puppy dogs. Tails. Essentially. <laughs> <laughs> Testosterone based uh, insults. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. So I. So wait. Well, then what is happening for your Thanksgiving? If oh, your I thought you'd never. Everything? I thought you'd never ask. I have no idea what's happening for oh. Thanksgiving because now I'm saying, look, oh, I don't care whatever you want to do. Like, I don't even want to say, I don't even want to say, well, you could come here. Like, I want them to feel welcome. Like, well, right. we could have dinner. We don't have to call it Thanksgiving. We'll just, we call, it just call it dinner. We'll just have make, we'll make pies. It'll be pie making day, <laughs> you know. And so, but, but then I don't want it to seem like I'm needy. Like, I need something. Like, I need you to come home. Like, I think you I, get, I think you get to play the mom card and be needy. Think of how needy children are for so long. Why don't moms get to be a little bit needy? I've I've staked my whole reputation on not being needy to to well, anybody. Well, shake things up. You you get. I, you I don't get know how to. I've got, I've, I've, as a mom. I've squished that out of myself. No, you it's, haven't. It's you like can't. toothpaste. You just squish it all out <laughs> until until it's all gone. I started to cry last night because I put my kid. My littlest kid always wants someone to lay with him before he goes to sleep, even though he's not that little anymore. I mean, he's little, but he's older. But he's still, that's his comfort thing. He wants someone to snuggle him when he's going to sleep. And he always, 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 always holds my hair. Like, he has ever since he was a newborn. That's his comfort thing to hold. Or anybody's hair who's in bed with him. <laughs> he used the dog's tail for a that's little while. That's cool. But... Hair's great. I, I, um, I must have said a thousand million billion times to him, Ira, you're ripping my hair out. Ouch. Can you just like go a little easier? Because he twists it around uh -huh. his finger. That's his like kind of OCD comfort thing. Uh -huh. Anyway, the last couple nights, I was, I get all positioned and I like kind of throw my hair out on the pillow because I know he needs it and nothing's happening. And I'm like, do you not need hair? We call it just hair. <laughs> we don't call it the hair. hair. Just, you know, generic hair. Yeah. He said, no, I'm all done with hair now. <laughs> and I said, what? And I was oh. like, okay, I didn't want to make like a big deal out of it no, or anything. Like it's cried. like, And then finally he goes to sleep and I go back to my own bed and I say to John, he's done with hair. <laughs> and I was like, all those years he's ripped my hair out and now like I miss him ripping my hair out. <laughs> And then, but before he went to sleep, he's going to his first dance tonight. And you're, I was, you're crying now. I, well, I'm laughing, crying. And then I started laughing so hard because before he went to sleep, he's like, mom, you got to pack me my dress clothes. And I was like, 
you're going to wear dress clothes to a dance? Like, he thought it was like a formal dance. He didn't know oh. it was just like a dance. It's just so cute. I just started laughing and crying because he doesn't want hair and he's going to a dance. And it's just. Yeah, so life silly. is weird. We all change, I you know. know. So, my hair is my own again, apparently. Well, more power to your hair. <laughs> On to the next. It might start thing. looking healthier, not your, being ripped out every your day. Your hair is now going to have re, going to be repurposed. Oh, That's Thanksgiving! True. I just want to say you I, could come to me. No, no, want, I'll have the, I'll have real and true Thanksgiving with Nana you. Nana is coming from Denmark. Okay. Oh, I, have, oh, I know Nana. Or I don't know Nana, but she's yes, friends with Molly and Ricky. Exactly. Well, she booked to come and stay at my Airbnb, and she had no idea. She's going to pay you to be her friend for Thanksgiving? <laughs> well, we're in that funny place where, you know, we're friends, but she also likes to support my Airbnb. That's she knows good. I'm a starving artist, and et cetera. But anyway, so she's nice enough to so book it, but she didn't even know that the dates were U.S. Thanksgiving. Oh. So she's coming, I think, on the 23rd. Third, is that right? I don't know. I don't have my calendar here, but she's going to be here for Thanksgiving. That's cool. So she and I, at least, have will have a pie day. Perfect. You know, we'll just have pie day. Because who wouldn't like to make pies all day? Uh, I mean, we could just nobody. have pie. Like, I don't, you know, I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not going to do the turkey anyway. Yeah. So we'll have pie. Very good. Good coffee. Yeah. And be thankful for pie and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> You know, don't like blow it out of proportion. You don't well, have to. We are be, you doing, have to, like, we're not doing anything really on Thanksgiving. I just we're feel doing like stuff on the weekend after. But don't you so. think people like try to shoot, like bite off more than they can chew in the thankful department? That they got to thank, like for like, oh God, I got to be thankful for everything. I don't know. Just, yeah, everyone on Facebook is doing this like thirty days of thankful. So every day they like put some thing they're thankful about, oh, and it's just like, yeah. I did that like ten years ago. That's so ten years ago. I don't know. It's good, I guess. That's kind of fun. I mean, it's better than, um, you know. 30 things I hate. <laughs> yeah, some of the stuff I that I could do that by. so much easier, though. That's too bad. I got to quit that. Yeah. It's cause... just because I'm stuffed up, though. If I wasn't stuffed up, I'd be thankful. Do you like to hear yourself sniffing in the microphone? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. And I should blow my nose. <laughs> but I'm one of those people. I have weird-shaped yeah. sinuses, so I actually am unable to blow my nose. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a little known fact. For there, the... Well, it just, it hurts so bad and nothing happens. I oh can't, it's not like, it, you, I can't, so need, I can only sniff. I can't blow. You need like a tea cozy to put on your nose. You if know, you've just ever been more... around me when I wash my face, it's, it's like obscene because, so I don't use a washcloth. I splash water. I like use my hands and splash water on my face. So anyone who watches me wash my face for the first time is usually blown away by the weird noises because I can't. I can't blow out with my nose. I have, I always have to plug my nose when I'm, when I jump into water swimming because I can't exhale through my nose. Oh. I can only inhale. You're sort of forcefully. a. Forcefully, anyway. You're kind of um, like a freak. Yeah, I know. So when I, when I wash my face, I, to get the water to not go up my nose, I have to blow really hard with my mouth. So I just make this like sound. That's. And everyone that's is a good, like, what is that? It's so. a good vocal exercise. Yeah. Um, it's time for another song. Oh, good. Great. So Grand. we're just going to have to take a break from talking about the way that you breathe and how <laughs> your nose works, <laughs> even though I'm fascinated by it. But um, okay. So the next song, let's see, we've got Greenville Trestle. I also can't use a Denny pot, but okay, go. Oh, okay. So I'm not going to lend you mine. For all of the people out there who are helpful. like, why don't you use a Denny pot? Like, because yeah. I drowned. I actually almost drowned last time I used a Denny pot. Oh, I hope you never get captured and tortured with I waterboarding. Know, waterboarding. That wouldn't work well for you. No. I mean, it would work well. It wouldn't go up my nose. Okay, here's right, the song. Play, <laughs> play this. All right. We're going to get ready. Okay, here we go. Carl, uh, Carl Goulet. On the Greenville Trestle. I'm looking straight down to Sauhegan waters, cold, angry, and brown. There's an oncoming headlamp as bright as the sun, and I'll have to answer for what I have done. I'll have to answer for what I have done. In my life I've doubted I had to be sure that love in the springtime would be sweet and pure. But spring can be rainy and dark, muddy brown On the Greenville Trestle, I'm looking straight down On the Greenville Trestle, 
looking straight down To kill like a bullet and cut like a sword Sometimes the best weapon takes only a word But love turned indifferent hurts deeper than hate I ran to reach her and she slammed the gate I ran to reach her and she slammed the gate I caught her at midpoint, she started to flail Her tears and the rain fell hard on the rail Oh how desperation can misunderstand Was the last thing I felt as she slipped through my hands The last thing I felt slipped through my hands Someday the rain ends, someday there'll be sun And I'll have to answer for what I have done My heart, like the water's cold, angry and brown On the Greenville trestle, I'm looking straight down On the Greenville trestle, looking straight down On the Greenville trestle On the Greenville trestle Thank you, Carl Goulet. Felt very cutty wumpled. Yes, that was recorded at Pepperbox Studio. Oh, in Chelsea, Vermont. So let's see now. Ugh, it's hair stick to your chapstick season. Oh, I went to this great restaurant. I didn't go to a lot of restaurants on my trip. I skipped dinner a lot just for cost cutting measures. I would eat a big lunch, or I would eat lunch and then just kind of fake my way through dinner. But I did, uh, my friend Monty and I went out to dinner in Trumansburg, New York, and we went to this place. She said, let's go to Atlas. Okay, whatever. I don't know what that is, but Trumansburg is a really cool town. That's where all the cool people live. Oh, and I uh, where all the cool people were. Yeah, that's where they are. And so get to Trumansburg, and it's a bowling alley it's a bowling it's like a hipster oh, bowling oh, alley oh no yes yeah, so it's got this fancy restaurant and bar and all the ipas you could ever want and it's right next to the bowling alley wow so you can bowl and then you can sit down and have this great hipster meal i'm sort of anti-bowling i don't like to bowl we didn't go there to bowl okay. we just went there so we had to t- kind of try to find the quietest spot i said to the waitress you know could you or the hostess could you please stick us away in a corner because I can't really talk over bowling at this point. Yeah. But I thought it was a very unique concept. And they have stuff like Vinyl Night, where they have a DJ comes and plays just vinyl. Well, and I told you, it's hipster. That's... It was even a hipster town when my mom was young and had friends who were artists, and they all lived in Trumansburg, New York. Did you see your Bob while you were there? Yeah, that's why I went. Oh, okay. I, I took her on. I thought you went through there to visit her but yeah i took her on drives every day because oh. she's 91 so there's yeah. not much else we could do i could get her into the car yep. and then we just drive one time one day we drove all the way around cuga lake went Cuga, all, cuga, cuga lake oh. yeah all the way to the top cool and all the way back down i love to drive around lakes i love to look at the little lake houses and think of people having so much fun i never had a lake house no me neither but we had I mean, we spent a lot of time at good friends' lake houses. I spent I never a did. lot of time at lake houses, and I, they are all, were always really good times. I had, like, one friend who belonged to the Yacht Club in mm-hmm. Ithaca, and I don't know. It was just, it was where the rich people went, like the rich well, kids. Well, none of our friends were really rich, but they were just, I don't know. There's something about being on the water. If I, If I didn't live in Vermont, I would pick anywhere on the water i just love to be on water i like streams better than ponds i like big big 
I like to look at big water. You do. I, I do. don't really. I mean, I like that in weird. passing, but I don't want to sit there in a house and look at a big pond. It just doesn't do anything for me. I want to mm. walk up. In I don't the woods know why I like it. I want to see a nice big river gushing out from nowhere. You know, really, it's reminiscent of very flat land, and I don't like very flat land. I don't like the Midwest. I don't like it being flat. It feels open and scary. But, but flat, I do like the placidity. Yeah, I don't know. It's just that feeling of calm. Or it is very calming. I'm always calm by the water. Yes. There is something be, calming. I must be. Do you think I'm a water sign? Is that how this works? What if is I your like sign? Water? I always forget everybody's I'm a Virgo. Sign. Virgo. I think that might be a water sign. Let's see. It's every three, right? Because there's four. I don't know. Four, four goes, That's why I asked you, astrologist Well, because four, four goes into 12. There's 12 signs. And there's four elements. So four goes into 12 three times. So you must so be earth every then. three. No, I'm fire. That doesn't seem right. Well, I've got a lot in Scorpio too, but I'm Sag. Yeah. <laughs> Sag. So. You, can't, you can't call yourself Sag. It's like Madge. It's like Vag. You can't say it on the radio. <laughs> You're so out of the loop, man. I'm just so out of it. I want this head cold to be gone. I can't even uh, think. I literally I... don't know what is and isn't appropriate to say right now because I'm probably running a fever and I'm trying really hard to not sound like I'm drunk. Well, that can work to our advantage on this show, you know. But it's hard because when I am drunk, I try really hard just to be quiet so I don't say things that I know that I really want to say. People. People but want you, can't you to do that talk on a radio when, show. You have to talk. No, people like you to talk when you're drunk, or when you're semi-drunk, or even when you're fake drunk. <laughs> Talking is your ace in the hole. Okay. Otherwise, I don't know what there is that you can. <laughs> uh, what am I trying to say? I'll sort of back myself into a corner know, here you because it's awesome about the modern day world. You could wear your pajamas in public, and no one even cares. I don't wear, I'm like, I'm not like those ladies who are pumping gas in their actual pajamas, but that's because my pajamas don't look like everybody else's pajamas. Like this is my pajamas and I'm wearing them right now. Okay. So you mean you sleep in your clothes? No. I mean, <laughs> leggings are, I think they're jammies. Well, there's nothing wrong with sleeping in your clothes. I'm completely for it. Well, I'm not going to sleep in uncomfortable stiff clothes. Like, are you going to sleep in jeans? Probably not, but I might go down to the long johns, right? Well, I got the long johns aren't clothes. But but you can't wear long johns out in public. What is the difference between long johns and like those baggy pajama band bottoms that everybody wears out well, in public? Well, those have more air in them. Long so johns it's air? Are, yeah, the difference is air, the amount of air. But I wear leggings out and in public. Wi- yeah, but wind... There's no air. Wind can't come up into the leggings, and they can't come into long johns, but they can come into pajama bottoms. So it's appropriate to wear in public if wind can come into your pants. <laughs> We should start a fashion <laughs> <laughs> blog. I know we should because we would have some very unique suggestions. I mean, you know me. You know my fashion sense. Uh-huh. I'm sh- sure they all love Always me. on point. Uh, I wore, I, <laughs> I didn't have any pants that didn't have holes in the knees. You don't when have I, holes right now, do you? Well, this is my best pair. Oh, look. I mean, those are little. So those these, are little holes. Yeah, this was my those best like pair. Those like the kind that you could buy that way already. Yes, distressed. Right. These look like very expensive distressed jeans, yes, but they're they not. Do. They're actually just worn out. Okay. So I took this pair on my trip and I featured them when I felt like I needed to not look like such a ragamuffin. <laughs> but the alternate pairs were definitely had bigger holes and they were more comfortable. So I kept, gra- I kept gravitating. I'd open my suitcase and I'd say, I really want to wear that, but I have to wear this, you know? John's starting to get really annoyed because I'm starting to keep more and more of my jeans in the chest freezer. And he's like, all right, you've taken over all the closets, and now you're going to take over the chest freezer, too, for your clothes? Wow. But it's a little unsettling because, so, for Jack Rowell, John keeps dead birds in our chest in one of our chest freezers because Jack Rowell likes to tie flies. And so, my blue jeans, I put them in big Ziploc bags, and they get all frosty kind of on the outside. So, I went to grab my blue jeans the other day, and I grabbed the bag that I could see the blue through, and instead it was a dead blue jay. You have it some... felt different. It felt different when I picked it up, but I was in a rush. And so then I, it swung around and I looked at it and I said, these are not my jeans. Did this it, is a dead bird. Did anybody ever tell you that you have <laughs> unique problems? Uh, I mean, you, I don't you're even, telling me now. I don't is that even, my sister? Psychotherapy probably couldn't even That looks just you. like my sister. I'm Can I just sure say is. something about the jeans in the freezer? Sure. 
I don't think, you know, once it's they... It's working. Okay, but once they freeze, yeah, you can take them out. Like, you've done the uh, thing. Yeah, but it's just easy to leave them in there. It's, like a, it's like a bureau. It's like an extra bureau no, that I've just not. discovered in my home. No, it's your freezer. There's a difference. Like, people start keeping your jeans in your freezer. It's the best. I you don't you have need... to wash them. They, it kills all the bacteria. This is what happens last longer. when you live in the country for too long. You start doing stuff that's really strange. No, this is like recommended by the Gene Council of America or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, well, can you put can you put bird feeders out yet? Are the bears all sleeping? Well, I keep wondering about that. Well, the, the chickadees are seeming very demanding right now. You know what my problem is? What is that? My bird feeder was destroyed in the spring by the bear. So before I can put it back out for the birds, I have to fix it. Oh. Because they See, mangled I don't it. think the bears are asleep yet because people are shooting them. So right. they must still be walking around. It's not like they're going into the dens and shooting sleeping bears, are they? They better not be. Yeah. I would be incredibly I, mad if that's what people are doing. I just don't want them to wreck my my little bird feeder. It's not nice. Maybe just wait another week. Yeah. Why aren't they asleep? It's Shouldn't they be cold. asleep? It's cold. I'd they be should asleep. be asleep by my birthday, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the darkest time of year. So that's a good time to just go to sleep. Okay. I mean, I do. Yeah. I really do wish there was a human version of hibernation. Oh, I thought you I said, I, you know what I thought you were going to say? I what? really wish there was a human version of you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you didn't say that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, what else? What else, Christina? Oh, we could thank our sponsors. We do have some sponsors. Oh, yes. And those sponsors were brought to us thanks to the organizational higher-ups here at the radio station who do a lot of hard work. Yeah. And they brought us uh, the Tunbridge Grease Collective as a, yep. as a fine, fine, upstanding sponsor. Yes. And Howvale Farms. Yes. Another fine, fine, upstanding sponsor. And, and Mountain Folk. Mountain Folk. It's all about concert promoting. Yes. So if, right you like, alley. if you like people who get up on stage and make noise that sounds nice, come to Mountain <laughs> there Folk. There you guys. You will find it at the Mountain Folk Concert Series. And that's what I know about music. It's not very much. But it's... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know, things... That, I just like to simplify things if I can. It's a good it's life a good is plan. too complex to it just hurts your brain at a certain point and we I need know. to relax our brains and let the water the pure water of Vermont just rush through all the synapses and clean them out so that we can be superior beings. That's a yoga move they tell you to envision. They do? I made that, that up. Bubbling they water. They took that so from me. You're supposed to take a deep 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 breath as deep as and slowly like you're supposed to make the breath last like 30 <sighs> seconds in and 30 seconds out again and you're I supposed can't to envision do that. Clean, pure spring water bubbling over all of your organs. You know what and I up hate through your nose and you know into your hate? brain, and then and then it bubbles back down. You know what I hate? I just hate guided visualizations. Just I know, for the record, I, do too. I really hate them because I can't I do them. I hate people who my, my... sit next to you in yoga class and fart the whole time. That's really upsetting. That's bad. But I would rather go sit by a stream than actually try to imagine a stream in my head. Yeah, so. she wasn't telling us to imagine a stream. Just water bubbling over our, our vital organs. Well, I'd rather it be a nice clean stream from Vermont than just some bubbly, you know, chlorinated water from Chicago. Yeah. I don't want that bubbling over my vital <laughs> organs. <laughs> How is it that we people all over the world are drinking chlorine? Is that okay? It's not okay. All right. Is everything inside of us like very white now? We have to sign off now. Okay. I think we're going to sign off. We're going to give you a little bit of Spencer Lewis on the way out. <laughs> and we're going to leave you with that thought about chlorine. But we'll be back next week. We will definitely Even though be we back. were not here for two weeks, we're back now. Yeah, thanks for hanging in there and not giving up on us, even though we had, like, stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so join us next week, and thanks for listening. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>